looks like we are connected and it looks like we are live waiting all right the views are coming in Hi guys, I'm Vu Nguyen. Thank you guys for joining another episode of Facebook Live. I'm uh, your host, your nail tech, and your model, and your cameraman, Vu Nguyen. And uh, today's episode, we're going to go through some advanced color mixing techniques. Some of these techniques um, might seem a little simple, but it can get a little complicated and can get a little advance for some of you guys out there so i'm going to try to explain everything in detail and as simple as i can hi eleonora hi harshi jesse how are you thank you guys for joining all right so advanced color mixing i'm assuming most of us know the color wheel if not we're going to go through some of that today so let me go ahead and turn the camera around um, actually this this is going to be a special little episode i'm going to show you guys a little sneak peek at um something that we got ready for you guys i gave you a little teaser on the last episode but let's show you guys what it's really like here flipping the camera around you guys notice i got my this is my table set up but you probably can't see it so clear right but there is i'm going to back it up so you guys can see what's going on here there is a protective shield that I have. I know I don't have any clients. I'm not working on anybody but myself. But if you see here, I got a protective nail tech shield. So take a look at that. It's, the opening here is large enough that I can actually take my 18G and go through the shield and have space to fit my hand through to change the times and the adjust the time settings on that there are two styles of this shield if you guys wondering this one's the flat one you'll see it's flat blank no logo and this one it looks blue and it looks like it has these curves on here and it does have a curve here but there's actually a protective film that you should move remove on both sides and on the feet Okay, these guys are universal they do slide off so you can slide these on and off um i'll take this one off so you guys can see a little hard to do with just without a tripod here but so you'll see how those are cut out and they'll slide in and lock in place so two different types of shields i know with a lot of uh Salons reopening and a lot of the country reopening. We're going to need to provide protection for ourselves and our clients. So this is a great way to have that protection. Once again, this is my little setup here. That's where you, I put it on. We um, I don't know the price. You can go to jellish.com and uh, search shield and you can find the price on that. Okay, so that's that's my setup here. I'm gonna go ahead and clip you guys on. All right, so on with some advanced color mixing. You guys will see um, my hands are still in really bad shape, still healing from my cuts. I'm gonna use Curex and. Spray that on, get myself nice and cleaned up, hand sanitized. So last time, I don't know if you guys saw, we um, on our lapse episode, I was showing how to do some portrait artwork. I'm going to turn on this other light here for you guys. There we go, now it's nice and bright. Showing you guys doing portraits, but this was in black and white. Okay, so had some questions about well what about color how do we mix the colors and how do we get that skin tone color so i'm going to show you guys that today how we can do skin tone this here is jellish art form gel you'll see i have a kit here six different colors 
there's your black, white, red, yellow, blue, and green. You have your primary colors and you also have a secondary color with green. Up here I have my black, white, yellow, and red. This is my, my little secret to mixing the perfect skin tones. There are also other kits. If you guys are interested in getting these gels or you guys are having a hard time finding these types of gels, they do come in other kits because just some of these colors we just can't mix by using our primary colors and black and white. So like colors that we can't make are neons. It's, it's nearly impossible to make neon colors just with your primary colors. Okay, so we've got neons. We also have effects. The effects also has um, metallic colors it has a lot of shimmery colors and some a pearlized color right here which can make change different colors into pearlized colors and the final kit is pastels pastels typically are pretty simple to mix but if you guys have ever tried to mix your own pastels by using white the smallest percentage of white can change the color completely so we do have four different kits those four different kits make it easy so we don't have to do so much mixing but when it comes to skin tones and doing some skin tones having these four colors is very very key hello jesus ramirez i hope you do get your wife some more she would enjoy having these colors at hand and being able to mix the colors together so to make the perfect skin tones I always suggest having some yellow white and red and mixing the three of those so I'm gonna grab the three of those and mix together and put it up a little closer so you guys can see and then we'll slowly add what we need to make those skin tones so like this it's becoming very very pink you can see we'll probably need a little more yellow in there to make it more of a peachy color. And you can see we're getting more of that skin tone already. We can add white in to, to lighten it up. Okay, so you see there, made it a lot lighter. And I always try to keep them separated in a way. And I like to do my mixing with a brush because the bristles do help with the mixing. So I'll make some separate skin tones here and I'll make a really light one. So I have three different types here, a really light one. And I'll use the really light shades for highlights, medium, darker, but then we also would like to make some browns, right? So to make some browns, this is what we're gonna do. I do have, this is a little trick I have here. I have my little, let me back it up so you guys can see, little Dappen dish there that is filled with artificial nail remover it's a great brush cleaner there are conditioners in artificial nail remover to keep the brush from drying out and bristles breaking up after time but you'll see here i dip my brush in it and to get majority of the product off and without clouding up my artificial nail remover i lift up this automotive towel put my brush in there and i'll squeeze and pull just do repeat the same process pull up and squeeze and pull it out. What you'll see underneath is I got rid of majority of the product I use for mixing and now my brush is pretty darn clean. Don't have to worry about clouding up my artificial nail remover and now I'll just give it some strokes just to clean off any excess. And now my brush is ready to go to mix my next color. And uh, from the Philippines. How are you, Anna? I'm supposed to be in the Philippines right now, I think. But um, given the current situation, I'm right here showing you guys these videos. And hope I don't bore you guys to death when it comes to doing this. But So let's get into making browns. Okay, We got our skin tones, our peaches, and our light skin tones. Let's get into browns because browns will be essential to a lot of our shading. You know, when, when we're doing shading and, and working with browns, you want to make red, yellow, and black. That's right, red, yellow, and black. So we're 
initially making an orange color and then we're going to mix in a little bit of black. I would start with a little bit of black. I might have a little too much there, so I'm going to release some. And now I'll mix in black to make a brown. And that will be used for shading on skin tones later. So you guys can see we have a lot of different tones that we made just by these colors. Now, if I want, I'm also going to make a dark brown use for some really dark shadows so i'll put black right to the side here and mix that in as well having this artist palette really does help it being clear does also help me know how opaque the colors are if you can see i cannot see behind these colors that just shows me how opaque it is and if you're going to try to do a lot of color layering then you definitely want your colors to be very, very opaque. Mixing a mid-tone brown right in the middle here. And, and a lot of times when I do a lot of uh, color mixing and, and I'm making a lot of these different colors, I like to keep them kind of in the same group, in the same family, and that way it makes it a lot easier for me when I'm applying these colors to know exactly where I went and where I need to go with my next one. And it keeps things less confusing for me. So if you guys see there, I'm, I made some skin tones and now it's gonna make it really easy for me to do, if I needed to do a portrait or do, a, do anything that involves skin tones, those are the colors I need. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate and I'll show you guys. Got a little nail pop here. Oh, before I get started on that, let me show you guys something really, really quick. Some of you guys had some, uh, messages earlier and people were asking about the dimensions of the shield so i don't know if you guys can see that let me put it up a little closer this is the curved shield and it goes like that so it's 23.75 inches high 26.15 in the width oops blocking myself there and here's a side view of it or an angled view of it and that's the curved one okay the flat one you do get a little bit more width it has a 30 inch width there still the same height and yes these are the ones with no logo i do know that if you do want the ones with the logo there are jellish and morgan taylor logos those are um, a little bit more. I, I don't know the price, but I do know they are a little bit more. So let me show you guys how easy it is to do a portrait in color. And I'm gonna do a very, very quick version of one, just so you guys get the idea. Um, I started with, the on my brush, the darkest brown I have. And you you know, doing the darkest brown isn't really necessary, but I like to, to really start from the darkest colors to my lightest colors and I like to graduate those colors from from that way the reason why I'd rather do it from dark to light is because when you add white to colors they become more opaque and then you can layer and layer and and kind of stack these colors up on top of each other with opaque colors and then things come out really really nice and it makes layering super easy so I'm just making a silhouette of a face here remember the details like the eyes and nose and mouth and all that stuff it's really not important at this stage at this stage we're just trying to get a basic sh layout of what we're doing so at this stage this is all i really need at this point i'm gonna go ahead and cure this reach over my shield reach underneath that and i will flash cure for 30 seconds one thing i'm going to show you guys um, I'm going to take this off for a second, is when I'm curing my colors, and this is really important, when you're using a light and you're curing things, make sure your colors are away from your light, and you can always pull down the shield to protect yourself a little more. If my color palette was really close to light, I would eventually cure all of my colors, and then they would become cured and unable to use. I'm going to go ahead and click this back on. And now this is cured. 
So five seconds, I cured it. Make sure that we talked about this in an earlier episode that we go into the bar and know where we are there. At this point here, I do have my darker browns. I'm gonna go ahead and clean off my brush. Get majority of it off, give it a couple wipes, and I'll go with my mid-tone brown. Go with my mid-tone brown and just go ahead and fill in those areas that you feel maybe a little lighter. Go ahead and fill that in. I'm gonna blend this out just a little bit. And when you're doing blending, you really, you start off very gentle here. And then as you want the colors to blend, you're pressing down harder. And you, if you see my bristles, they start to bend. That means I'm really trying to make it blend a little more. And I'm pressing down harder in order for those colors to blend better. I'm gonna go ahead and move this out of the way. Put tip in and I'm gonna cure for five seconds. Just a flash cure. I'm gonna go ahead and get my mini gel striper brush. And this mini gel striper is gonna be what I do my measurements with. If you saw the last episode, when we do our measurements and we're working with our measurements, we're really just placing these little tiny dots. And here we, I'm gonna use black. You can use a dark brown, a black. It's up to you. There's really no right or wrong here. We're gonna measure where we want our chin. So let's see, this is where the chin would be. And then we're gonna figure out where the center is here. So here's the center. I'll get a little bit more. I'm gonna just use straight up black. It's the easiest way to, to show it. Make your eye, make another eye, make a dot for the nose. We're gonna measure in between the length of the eyes and the chin, right in the center. There's our nose and there's our mouth. So pretty darn simple looking nail here. I'll bring that chin, the jawline out a little bit more. And now we're gonna make the shape of the eyes. Pretty simple here. I'm just gonna take my brush, go right into that first eye, right on top of that circle and make some eyelashes. So you'll see I just did an eyelash there. And then I'll take this up, the bottom part here and the tip of the eyelash, bring it down, and we're gonna make a bottom eyelash. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see that, it's very tiny. Do the same thing on this other side. I was getting a little closer for you guys. Do the upper eyelash. Come in here and do a bottom eyelash. Okay, so you guys can see here. Let me show you guys. Well, let's see if it focused. Trying to get the focus. And there we go. We're going to make the shape of the nose. I'll bring it down. So, yeah, I'm right below the shield here. Go ahead and make a shape of the nose. It's like a little baby V. It's a very soft V here. And we can do our eyelashes, or our, actually we already did the eyelashes. Let's do our eyebrows. Make the shape of the eyebrow right above the eye. And how you shape the eyebrows really changes the, the mood and the, you know, the, the, the feeling of the, the portrait. When the eyebrows are kind of sloped down like that, it kind of makes the person sad right away. Okay. Jacob, Daniel, how are you, man? Miss you. Hope you're doing good. Um, and it, no, this does not look better than you. If any of you guys know who Jacob Daniel is, he's probably like one of the handsomest guys you've ever met. So if you ever see him at a beauty show, make sure you stop by and say hi. All right. So we got both eyelashes, semi mouth. We don't have a full on mouth yet. Let's go ahead and do an upper lip. Just using the tip of our brush here and then do a little outline for the bottom lip all right i made the bottom lip a little bit too big at the bottom there i made a little mistake but that's okay 
we can always take our one of our blendy brushes and this blendy brush I use is the six gel oval and I'll erase the part I didn't like I'm gonna show you guys that didn't like this bottom part let's go ahead and erase that which is fine everything else is cured already you can go back and fix that line and that's the way we wanted it just like that and we wanted it like that we didn't want it too much and we're going to go ahead the now that we got our dimensions where we like it let's go ahead and cure that we're going to cure that do a flash cure for five seconds five seconds is all you really need for a flash cure when you're using these gel paints they do cure really well and they cure without an inhibition layer so when i touch it i won't smear it i won't have an any inhibition layer or any color residue on my finger that means that when you layer colors they're gonna be clean they're gonna be pure and you're not gonna have this blotchiness or this muddy look when you're doing these things all right now I'm gonna add my shadows so we're gonna go back to our color palette and we're gonna go back to that very very dark brown we made and we're just a little bit you see i just got a very very tiny tiny amount there i don't have a lot gonna go ahead and start making my shadows if you guys saw the last episode we were talking about light sources okay and and knowing where your light source is for me knowing where my light source is is very very important i want to always know where to highlight, where to add shadows, and sometimes that can be confusing. But if you know exactly where you want your source of light to be, it makes it so much easier. Okay, so I already know what side I want my light. I'm gonna cast the shadow down. My light's gonna be coming from up here, the upper left. Now I'm gonna do the face with that. Go ahead and, I did the chin area. Let's do the nose, bridge area. Remember, if you ever make any mistakes, you always have an eraser. You can always use your number six gel oval brush and erase any of your mistakes. Just make sure the brush is nice and clean and then give it a nice wipe. Okay, we're doing our, our shadows here. I always like to do my shadows first and that's personal preference. You know, I, I see so many artists out there do things in reverse and, and their art is great. It's just, I'm just showing you guys the way I do it. Um, and if you do it the other way, there's nothing wrong with it. It's art. And go ahead and blend. And you'll see, like, I start getting that nose defined, that bridge. And that area gets really defined with the shadows. And so I really define that area. Blend that over. And I'm also using, I know the brush hairs look like they're all over the place. They're kind of like that for a reason. I kind of like my, my hairs all over the place. And, and the reason why is because... Some, sometimes I like to use those, those outside hairs just to do little tiny blends. I'm going to go ahead and darken, do some shadows over here. Let's do that nice and quickly. Other side of the eye, go ahead and do that. Under the eyebrow, I'm trying to get these angles so you guys can see them on camera. It's a little difficult. And I'm sure you guys can understand why you guys saw my setup. Not easy being a cameraman, model, and nail tech, but we're going to do it for you guys. Okay, so we got our shadows in. Let's go ahead and start to cure that. We'll flash cure that. It's only a five second flash cure. We're going to clean my brush while I'm doing that. And now we'll go on to some of our other shades. Okay, I got some more shades here. Let's go ahead and get into... I think we got enough darkness going on, so let's go ahead and lighten things up. I'll go into this skin tone shade here. And that's, remember red, yellow, and white is what does that. That's how we mix that. And then we're gonna start focusing on where the sun is hitting now. We're gonna start highlighting. Let's go ahead and start highlighting. And you'll see I'm blending this. It's like doing a little mini ombre almost where we're just using pressure. That's, that's all it really is, is taking the brush and putting a lot of pressure on it to get these colors to blend that way. And I'm going to press, press, 
hard when I want to blend more, a very soft blend. So I'm pressing really hard in certain areas. And the camera's not focusing right. There we go. I'm gonna go back with our brush again. Let's go ahead and make that nose more three-dimensional. It's a little bit different than the last time you guys saw it. Last time you guys saw me, we did it in black and white. It was the easiest way to do it. Getting a little more advanced mixing color into the game. So, hope you guys enjoy. Hope you guys get some time to practice this. I'm, you know, as things are starting to open back up, we're gonna have less time to practice. So now is your time to, to get your practice in. I'm gonna go ahead and blend those areas. I wanted some of those areas to blend a little better. I'll go ahead and just give some areas a soft blend there. Remember, if you want the softer you want it, press down even harder. Make that cheekbone stand out. Let's do the same thing on this other cheekbone. Nice little soft blends. Okay, so we got this soft blend. I want it to be a little lighter right here, so I'm just going to brush this down. Remember, there's there's really no reason for for your artwork to, to be bad or to be unacceptable in your eyes. Um, when you're doing this, if you don't like what you're doing, you can erase it. Don't cure it. You can always erase it. So let's say like, like this cheekbone. I didn't like it. It's too big. It looks like there's too much of a highlight there. I'll take my brush and I'll remove that. Okay, I'll just soften that up. And now it's where I like it. I can go ahead and cure that now. Do a flash cure. And now things are getting smaller, so I'm going to switch my brush when things get a little tight, when they're getting a little smaller. I'm going to go over to the mini gel striper, cleaning it off. It had some black in it from before. And we're going to go ahead and do this bottom lip. I'm going to take that bottom lip and I'm going to use a brown color for the bottom lip. Go ahead and use this brown color. Sometimes you can use a pink, and it's really up to you. Need that a brown color, and I want to highlight more on this face here. And so I'm going to go and we're going to get, we use this color highlight first, and now we're going to go in the middle and use that middle tone. Going to go ahead and place that right where the sun is hitting first as we blend that down and pull that out. And it, it, it's really easy, especially when you got the right tools to go in here and get these little tiny areas. You'll see that nail is about the size of my nail. <laughs> very, very small. And when you get into areas that are really small and you want to start blending those areas, lay it down with your tiny brush and then take that other blender and go in there and you can blend those areas out. Just like that. Now I want that nose to stand out a little more, so I'm gonna go in and just the tip, just want the tip of the nose to really pop. And I want the cheekbone right here to pop out more. And when I'm, when I'm doing this, I'm just thinking about where the light's gonna hit and where the light's gonna hit this face. So light's probably gonna hit here a little more Would be nice. We did an episode on just how light hits and affects different things, but that could get a little complicated. But we're gonna go in here back with our blendy brush and we're gonna blend. You'll see, like, when I do these things, having that blendy brush really does help. It makes it can soften things up so much for you and make your thing, make your, your artwork come to life. Gonna put one highlight for the nostril. Okay, so we got another like a nostril here, and I'll do a darker one on the other side. A little darker on the other side. Just a little bit. We're gonna finish everything off with that very, very light um, pink here. So I'm gonna grab this very, very light, the lightest. And I tried to do these in just three stages, just dark, medium, and light, just to make it simple and make it easy to understand. When you want to get even more advanced, you can go up to five ranges, up to six, depending on how you want to do it. 
But yeah, you can go as, as detailed as you want and get as complicated as you want when you're doing these things. So I'm going to put that right there, right where the sun's going to hit the most. Right the tip of the nose, a little bit there around right the cheekbone, and a little bit here on that chin. And now we're going to go ahead and blend that slightly. We're not going to blend it too much, just very, very slightly. Because we didn't cure before in between here. We didn't cure it. So it's kind of blending in with that previous color we did. Okay, just a very, very soft blend. Now I can go ahead and cure it. Before I do, I'm going to straighten this nose out, clean off my brush, and I'm, I'm actually going to use my mini gel striper as a blendy brush. Okay, I'm going to blend, since it's such a small area, I'm going to blend these colors together. And touch up on that nostril a little bit. We can go ahead and cure this. I'll do a, another flash cure, five second cure there. And then we can decide how we like our hair style. Hello, Emanuele. Let's go ahead and figure out what kind of hairstyle we like here. Um, uh, we'll make this guy have a very weird hairstyle. How about that? Could be any, any, any hairstyle, really. Got punk rocker hairstyle. It's up to you. But hair is always the last thing I, I always do. And think of it as shapes. You know, you don't want to think of it as individual strands of hair. Just think of it as a shape, you know, the hair, when we start thinking about all the details and all of the, the strands of hair, it gets too complicated. But when you think of it as only a shape, it becomes a lot easier. And when you guys want to start really getting crazy with your um, designs and, and when you think about how can I design something, think about shapes, think about doing things in shapes. And when you look at something, look at things as shapes instead of objects and that makes things a lot easier to 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 put down on a nail to do it on a canvas to do, to do it all in general so I, I put down my dark hair this guy's got like some crazy hairdo um we're gonna go ahead and flash cure that we'll do the mid-tones on the hair just some little highlights and it's very similar to what we did before so we did this before and we did the little highlights in the hair over here and the highlights in the hair over here. And it's pretty much the same thing. I'll, I'll even use it, one of the darker skin tones as the highlights for this hair. Sometimes you can use blue and other colors. Uh, really, it's, it's what you're the artist, you create it, and it's your art. So it should work for you. Okay. Now... We're at the very end here. We're going to go ahead and we're going to do some highlights with just white. And I use white very, very little. I don't like to get too carried away with my white highlights because they do stand out a lot. I always do these little dots in the pupil. And that really, I don't know if you guys could see that, but just that little dot in the pupil really gives that character some, some life. Is that Robert's hair? Um... Yeah, this does look like my brother. If you guys don't know, my brother is Robert Nguyen, and uh, he's got hair like this. Do that second little dot. It's very hard to see, but it does make a huge difference. Okay. Now we'll do the hair highlights, and, and very, very little is needed. And very, very little. You don't need too much. Just a little bit where the sun's going to hit it. Let me get a little closer so you guys can see. But if this were my brother, I don't know if you guys know knew my brother back in the day. But if this were my brother, I'd have to do this for him. <laughs> now you guys know. <laughs> okay, so um, hope you guys enjoy this. You know, this is a very, very simple way of doing portraits and how to mix colors for skin tones. You know, I'm going to set him down. Go ahead and we will do a full cure now that we're done. 30 seconds. But when you, when it comes to making skin tones, guys, you really only need white, yellow, red, black. 
and your black is really to make the browns but your your main buildup is going to be red yellow and white when it comes to doing the shadows and and comes to doing your darker areas make some browns in there and you're going to make your browns with red yellow and black okay so go i'm going to finish this funny character off with some top it off all right and you'll see all those colors that we blended together they, they really end up popping when you do that and once you put that top coat on everything pops and you get it's the most gratifying moment of doing nails is when you put the top bit off on there and you get to see your work shine emma how are you Jacob, I'm glad that you like that little uh, finish. I want my nails like that. She needs to work on her English there, but please, please. So, Emma, maybe you can get one of these someday. Um, you see we have these shields already. Maybe someday uh, as we start to open the country back up, maybe you'll do your nails. Okay, that's the longest 30 seconds ever, but there it is. So, there it is, guys. Funny little character that we got here. Um, hope you guys enjoyed today's uh, quick little lesson on mixing skin tones and some advanced color mixing there. I know there's only four colors here, but it does get advanced. It does get really complicated. Uh, once again, if you guys, if you guys that are tuning in late, you guys see my setup here i do have this really cool really safe thing here and this is a shield all right it's made of acrylic it's solid these things are solid acrylic when they ship to you guys they will ship with this protective film on there so they, they don't get all beat up in shipping they have a, a curved version here it's nice and curved and what I'm using is the flat version. See, I got my lights set up everywhere and a bunch of lights, but I'm gonna turn this camera back around. Oh, hope you guys enjoyed. Um, gonna be back on Monday, and I hope all you guys do tune in on Monday. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hope you guys are all safe and are practicing your social distancing. Please be safe out there and enjoy your weekend. So have fun, guys. I love you. Peace. I'm out of here.